So we spent a day and a half, almost two days, prepping for this epic event of painting. So our friend Jacob, who came out on Saturday to help us prep, came right back Sunday morning, ready to help us paint. I, earlier than we were wanting him to, he actually woke me up with the text message, I'm here, okay, time to get up. Um, so the plan was, uh, we, we got her off the um, rotisserie the day before, right? Yes. So we ended prep with getting her off the rotisserie. Had her on the floor, carpet underneath, ready to go. Our next door neighbor has a paint booth in their garage. So uh, they um, said, oh yeah, we'll, we'll get started in the morning. So we call them and say, oh, we're not gonna be home until 11, but here, here's, here's, we left the door open, so go, go get started. So get the paint booth all set up. Um, their paint booth hasn't been used in a while, so we rolled down the sides before we brought anything over. I'm glad we did because a lot of dust and flex came out. Uh, probably should have done a better job of cleaning that up than we did, because I do think some of that dust is the makes some of the rough spots that we see in the paint. Yeah. Um, but got that set up, we had to bring the air compressor over. We set our rolling cart up with all of our paint supplies and everything we needed. So it took a couple trips to bring supplies over. Then it came time to bring the actual fuselage over. That was fun. So we had a couple ideas. Either we're going to use one of our rolling benches and just roll it. Now, the way our neighborhood is, our houses are spread apart a little bit. So if we're going to roll it, we had to roll all the way down our driveway, roll all the way down to their driveway, and then all the way down their long driveway into the garage. We're talking like two and a half football fields here. Yeah. So going down the driveways easily doubles or triples the trip. Trust me, I know, the air compressor had to take that route. Uh, and that's heavy enough as it is, even though it's on wheels. So then we were thinking, we can back the pickup truck up. That was my idea. And we can put carpet in the back of the pickup truck, put the heavy side, the, the, the firewall side, into the bed, let the tail stick out, slowly drive it over and with, just, you know, like funeral procession style, where two people in the back are, just, you know, guiding the tail. Uh, and bring it over that way. And we were about to do that because our neighbors hadn't gotten home yet. If we were gonna carry it, we wanted one more pair of hands. So right as we were about to do that, our neighbor came over and said, hey, I can help. So we just kind of made the decision, let's pick this up, see how bad it is. So, yeah, we got it and we walked it across the yard um, so fast that I don't think we got the best footage of it. I think Melissa was running behind I us was, with the camera. Yeah, I had other stuff and things, and I wasn't prepared for that. And but our security cameras picked up a couple uh, good shots of it. So <laughs> um, we just hoofed it across the yard and brought it over there. We already had carpet laid down on the floor over there. Um, we decided that we were going to have it on the ground while I painted. Um, yeah, it was probably not the best idea. But I think any of the benches that we had would have been too tall. That's true. So maybe our lower bench would have worked. I think it, you know, if I could have had it up six to 12 inches, I think that would have been perfect. Honestly, in my opinion, I think the best route would have been to put the rotisserie on over there. The, I, if we had it on the rotisserie, I agree the rotisserie would have been great for everything except for the bolts where the rotisserie connects. That was the only means we decided that we were painting the 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 the, the J channels and the uh, longer ons. Uh, we would have had a big shadow where the bolts covered up the longer on. Yeah. Granted, we would have bolts going through there that hold the engine on, so it would be covered anyways. So rotisserie would have been easier, but I'll be honest. Once we started spraying stopping to rotate just wasn't going to happen yeah so we got everything set up ready to go um then we had to turn our attention to ventilation ventilation is really important so uh their paint booth has a giant hole for air intake on one side and we set up a big shop fan to vac air out and then two bock fans to continue to evac the air out the garage um I always knew ventilation was important. I thought 
maybe it's not that that you need it. You, it the amount of spray and fumes without ventilation, forget the health hazards, even with a respirator on, you won't see anything. <laughs> it, you need that stuff to be shot out. So, um, got our gun, pre cleaned our gun with a uh, paint gun cleaner, got all everything ready to go, got the air turned to where we needed it to be, tested everything, um, and now we're ready to go. It's time to mix the paint. You suit it up and then you mix the three different parts. Yep. The we had the one what was that quart pint? What size did we have? A paint. A paint. It's the it's a small unit Just of paint. It's a quart. It's a quart. I always get quarts and pints mixed up. Yeah, I think it's a quart. So we had just one quart of the paint. Um, so uh, if you remember our uh, prep video, where the, our paint system video, filled the cup up to the number seven mark, added one part of the reducer to bring it to the next seven, and then the hardener to add it to the next seven, running it through the filter the whole time, stirred it, got a new filter out, poured th that, so that paint allowed me to fill the paint gun about a time and a half. So, um, yeah, we so used half and then half. Yep, and then took a break and then we mixed up the second batch and then we used about half of that to get basically two coats of paint. Um, that uh, first mix that we did, I was able to cover almost everything in the fuselage except for a few spots. So the second time we filled it up, it, I was able to continue and get the rest of the second coat down and the, the few spots that needed it still. So we ended up with about half of it left over when we we're done. So that quart is more than enough to do what we're doing inside here. So um, that was one of the questions that we just didn't know. It would have been a really, really bad day if we had run out. If we ran out, but the actual spraying went pretty fast. Yeah, I mean about 30, 45 minutes of the actual spraying. Yep. I sat outside. Yeah, you were kept you oh, far away from the fumes. <laughs> Although your first camping spot was in front of the fans. I quickly moved. <laughs> yeah, that, that that didn't work. I, it's amazing how well that train of fans that we made really push that stuff out yeah. and it's amazing where the paint goes yes we got a little paint on the fuselage on the outside but uh sorry evoke you'll, you'll take care of it we hope <laughs> uh, my strategy was to do nice even sprays as long as i could and overlap by about 60 to 70 percent overlap back and forth as much as possible that works out really well for the large areas, but then eventually you just really got to go into the small areas. Um, we have a couple runs. We do. Uh, a couple spots where I'm like, oh, it just needs a little bit more, and oh, I regret that little bit more, but we'll never see it again. It's going to get covered. Um, we could sand it down and do it again. There were some spots that didn't get fully covered, but you were going to have to like turn the gun upside down to get to it. And well, obviously we know that wouldn't work. Yeah. The paint gun is gravity fed. <laughs> so upside down, you, you're spraying air. That's not going to work. So um, because it was on the ground, I couldn't reach in and tilt up and get those spots. But again, unless you are inspecting our plane with a mirror, you probably won't see those spots ever. Mm -hmm. So so that, that turned out good and um, wow. Uh, we brought it back over uh, an hour or so later, uh, let it sit for several more hours, and we peeled up the tape while it was still tacky. Which and is, it looked great! It, looked, <laughs> it was, because when we brought it over, you've got, you see the spots we painted, you also see all the plastic and paper that's half painted. It looks like a hodgepodge mess of like... We, you just aren't sure. We think it's good. And I'm sweaty tired from wearing this paint suit and the respirator. Um, my glasses have a coat of um, thin red paint on them. <laughs> Still, um, I'm waiting for my new flying eyes glasses to come in, I think, tomorrow. So I can get back to my favorite glasses. 
You, I'm jealous. You, you're wearing your flying eyes. Uh, I would not have worn my nice flying eyes while painting. These are the only glasses that don't give me a headache. Lightweight. Um, <laughs> and then, I didn't mean for this to be a flying eyes plug, but they are great glasses. <laughs> uh, then brought it over and then pulled it up. Peel up the paint before it has a chance to dry overnight. Give it many, many hours, so you want it still slightly tacky. Um, and then carefully peel up all the tape. And uh, wow. It looks amazing. It looks great. The uh, built-in clear coat into the paint that we use looks fantastic. I'm so glad we didn't have to do like a multi-part thing. Yes. The other option is you put down your base coat, let it uh, cure for a decent amount of time, uh, I think at least an hour or so. You still want it somewhat tacky when you do it, then you go back and spray the clear coat. In my opinion, you better know what you're doing because you know you don't clearly see the clear coat go on and as it cures, it changes how it looks. So you kind of have to know what it looks like in the immediate, intermediate stage to know that you're gonna get it right. And we didn't. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just building an airplane, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so if you take all of our advice, you're, you know, you're in trouble, you know, <laughs> do your own research, just take it with a grain of salt, but we're, we're happy with how it came out. Um, lots of, you know, you know us, we've, it's bold, it's red, um, all the rivets back there, all the pop rivets on the, the baggage floor look nice and red. Um, the one thing we were going to do, and to be honest, in the action, we just forgot is putting q-tips in the nut plates yeah so i did some research on what do you do about the nut plates well if you prep it in a way that you have a line where you don't want it you're not painting over the nut plate so no paint's getting into the actual nut itself if you're doing what we're doing and you're worried about spraying into the nut plate there's two schools of thought and eh, who cares it'll be fine if there's any paint when you get the screw through there, it, it'll break it off and uh, the screw will work just fine. Or the other school of thought is take a Q-tip, cut it so you can put the Q-tip just inside of the nut plate and block it a little bit. Um, we were gonna do that, but um, I realized it as I was coming out of the paint booth. Huh, we forgot to do that. So, so far we've set a couple nut plates into paint that we have uh, or nut, nut plates that we've painted over, they work fine. They mm. work absolutely fine. So I'm not too worried about any of the We nut haven't plates. had any issues. So uh, we got a lot to go. Um, so we may find an issue here or there, but pretty sure we can just get the sh screw through there and it, um, you know, a little oil in the screw and I'm sure it'll go through fine. Worst comes worst, put a little degreaser in the screw or uh, solvent on the screw and break up whatever paint's in there. So. It's painted, and then, uh, you know, it was fun. It was actually our neighbor's wife who helped us bring it back. Uh, she, she's a beast. Um, she, uh, she's like, yeah, I'll, I'm here. I'll, I'll, I'll carry it over. And it was Jacob who almost needed a break, not, not our neighbor's wife. <laughs> so um, here it is, and um, lots of uh, pictures and footage of how awesome it looks. Uh, we got to sit in our plane the first time before we put it back on the rotisserie and make our airplane noises. There was something satisfying about it being freshly painted when we did that. Yes. And on to rudder pedals, brake lines, uh, then we're going to do flat motor, then we're going to start running the elevator control rods yep. and uh, other systems. Systems, yep. systems, systems. Lots to tell you about. Thank you for joining us on 14 Victor Echo. See you next time. Just, it's painted, right? Not yet. We just drop it in the paint booth and it gets painted. <laughs> That's how it works, right? No? Magic. <laughs>